This lesson provides the skills needed to establish communications with an SLC 500 processor, download a project, go online, and set up an Ethernet connection with an SLC 505 processor. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to upload and download a project, go online and offline with an SLC 500 processor using a serial and an Ethernet connection, configure an Ethernet connection to an SLC 505 processor, and change processor modes using RS Logics 500 software. Establishing online communications with an SLC 500 processor will enable us to execute projects on our plant floor, monitor and troubleshoot projects, and edit and test projects. Before we can go online with an SLC 500 processor, we must complete some required steps. First, we must prepare our project to communicate with an SLC 500 processor. Second, we must download a project to the processor. Once we've downloaded a project, we'll explore how to go online with an SLC 500 processor over a serial connection, change the processor mode, upload a project from an SLC 500 processor, go offline with an SLC 500 processor over a serial connection, set up an Ethernet connection with an SLC 505 processor, switch our communication connection from serial to Ethernet, and go online with an SLC 505 processor over an Ethernet connection. The first task we must do before downloading a project or going online is to establish communications with an SLC 500 processor. In this lesson, we'll initially be establishing communication with an SLC 505 processor over a serial connection. Before communication can occur, we must make sure that our SLC 505 processor is properly connected to our computer and that power is applied to the processor's rack. Let's first confirm that the serial cable is connected to the processor's channel 0 and to our computer's serial port. Next, we must confirm within RS Link software that our RS-232 DF1 driver is configured and running by observing the RS Link's Configured Drivers dialog box. Now let's configure RS Logics 500 software to use the RS-232 DF1 driver for communicating with our SLC 505 processor. We'll launch RS Logics 500 software. Next, let's open the project file we'll be downloading to an SLC 500 processor. From the toolbar, we'll click Open. Then we'll locate and select the project file, and click Open. If the DF1 driver isn't displayed on the RS Logics 500 online toolbar, we need to specify it as the communication method for our project. From the Tools menu, we'll select Options. Then we'll click the System Communications tab. From the Driver drop-down list, we'll select the DF1 driver. Next, we'll click OK to confirm the driver setting. If we're prompted to use this new driver setting as the new project setting, we'll click Yes. The online toolbar now displays the DF1 driver. A properly connected serial cable is installed between your computer and SLC 500 processor, and an RS-232 DF1 driver has been configured in RS Link software. Define the DF1 driver as the communications driver for your project file we can download a project to our SLC 500 processor. When a project is downloaded, it is copied from the computer's hard drive to the SLC 500 processor's memory. If the processor already has a project contained in its memory, its memory is overwritten with the new project. Since the ultimate goal of downloading a project and going online is to have a processor execute the project, we must make sure that we have verified the project and corrected any errors. Warning. Use caution when downloading a project. Overwriting a project that is resident or executing in an SLC 500 processor's memory can lead to unexpected machine operation that can cause injuries to personnel or equipment damage. Before downloading a project, we must first select the processor with which we want to connect. To do this, from the Communications menu, we'll select System Communications. The Communication dialog box opens. Notice that this dialog box looks very similar to the RS Who window in RS Link software. From the Communications dialog box, we'll select the DF1 driver. 
Notice that the DF1 network icon is animated. This indicates that the network is being browsed. Browsing happens automatically when we select the network icon because the Auto Browse feature is enabled. We want to connect to the SLC505 processor, which is node 1, so we'll click the SLC500 processor icon. Now we can download a project from this dialog box. Let's click Download, which will download our open project file to the SLC505 processor. The Revision Note dialog box opens, which lets us enter revision documentation for the project. In the Revision Note text box, we'll type Download it using DF1 driver, and click OK. A confirmation message opens, asking if we're sure we want to proceed with the download. We'll click Yes. Progress bars and windows keep us informed of the status of the download. RS Logics 500 software provides other navigation options for downloading a project, such as from the Communications menu and from the Processor Status drop-down list. The computer and processor are properly connected and an error-free project is open. Download the project to an SLC 500 processor. When you overwrite an SLC 500 processor's memory, several message boxes may appear according to your configuration. Some typical messages are a message box showing processor information for the source and destination. Any mismatches will be displayed here. This message generally occurs when we're downloading a project that has a processor type defined that is different from the processor we're downloading the project to. By confirming the message, RS Logics 500 software will update the processor type and resize any data tables in the project to match the requirements of the target SLC 500 processor. A warning that the processor will be switched to program mode. This message occurs when we're downloading a project to a processor that is executing another project. A warning message that the communication configuration between the project and processor are different, and that a loss of communications will occur if you accept the new configuration. Clicking Don't Apply will continue the download. A dialog box to enable forces in the processor. This message occurs when the project being downloaded contains enabled forces and a warning that the processor will be switched to run mode. This message alerts us that the downloaded project will begin executing immediately. RS Logics 500 software guides us through the download process, so it's important that we follow the directions and prompts. Now that our project has been downloaded, we can place our project online and have it execute within the processor. The final message we receive is whether we want to go online. We'll click Yes. The rotating ladder icon indicates that RS Logics 500 software is online with the SLC 500 processor we selected. This means that we've successfully connected and configured the hardware and software and have established communications with the SLC 500 processor. We can also go online from the System Communications tab. As you can see, this tab provides one location where we can select a communication driver, select a processor to connect to, download a project, and go online. Another way to go online from the communications menu is by clicking Who Active Go Online. From this dialog box, we can select a processor and click OK. Once online with the processor, we can perform online activities using the communications menu, the online toolbar, and the online editing toolbar. Once our project has been downloaded to an SLC 500 processor and is online, we'll want to change the processor mode. We can change the processor mode two ways, using the processor key switch or remotely using RS Logics 500 software. We can only change the processor mode from RS Logics 500 software when the processor's key switch is set to remote. Also, an SLC 500 processor must be in remote mode for us to edit a project online. Therefore, our processor's key switch is set to remote. From the Communications menu, we'll select Mode, from which we can change a processor's mode to Program or Run Mode and execute the project in Test Single or Test Continuous. Let's select Program. 
Well, the SLC 500 processor is in program mode. It does not scan or execute ladder programs, and outputs are de-energized. We can easily switch processor modes. From the communication menu, let's select Mode, and then Run. We're prompted to confirm the mode change. We'll click Yes. In Run mode, the operational indicator on the online toolbar is green. While in Run mode, the processor scans and updates I.O. Next, let's place the processor in Test Single mode. The Test Single mode applies to SLC 502 and higher processors. The single step test option initiates the processor to scan and execute a single rung or a group of rungs. For example, we'll enter file 2 and rung 0 as the starting point or breakpoint of the test. Then let's click Go Breakpoint. Once the test is complete, the operational indicator on the online toolbar changes to yellow. Instead of clicking Go Breakpoint, we could click Go Single Step. RS Logics 500 software scans the project one rung each time the button is clicked. Another way we can change processor modes within RS Logics 500 software is using the processor status drop-down list. From the processor status drop-down list, we'll select Test Continuous. We're prompted to confirm the mode change. We'll click Yes. While in Test Continuous mode, the processor performs the same activities as when it's in remote run mode, except that output circuits are not energized. Using this mode, we can test and troubleshoot projects without worrying about machine operation. In Test Continuous mode, the operational indicator on the online toolbar is orange. After working with a project that's online with a processor, we might have made changes to the project that we want to save. When this occurs, we'll need to upload the project. When a project is uploaded, it is copied from the SLC 500 processor's memory to the computer's hard drive. Uploading a project is generally safe because we are merely making a copy of the project that is resident or executing in an SLC 500 processor's memory. To upload a project, from the Processor Status drop-down menu, we'll select Upload. A progress bar keeps us informed of the upload's progress. Upon a successful upload, we're prompted to confirm that we want to go online. We'll click Yes. Now the project in our processor and computer are the same. We can also upload a project from the Communications menu and the System Communications tab. Let's upload the project again. From the Communications menu, we'll select Upload. We're prompted to save our changes. We'll click Yes. Let's enter a revision note to document the upload. And click OK. We may receive a message alerting us that data table values may have changed and to upload them. Clicking Yes uploads the data tables from the processor to our computer. Now that we've uploaded a project, we can go offline with the processor to make offline edits, do additional development, etc. We can go offline from the Communications menu or the Processor Status drop-down list. Let's use the Communications menu. We'll select Go Offline. We're prompted to save our changes. We'll click Yes. In the Revision Note dialog box, we'll click OK. We may receive a message alerting us that data table values may have changed and to upload them. Clicking Yes uploads the data tables from the processor to our computer. The project is then placed offline. 